finally stopped raining for a few days and I think the grass is now pretty dry. So the farmer who helps us out sometimes is going to cut our grass this week. So it will be quite a different look soon. No more flowers, no more tall grass and nicely mown shorts. Although I like the tall grass. But he needs it for uh, hay for his cows, so that's good. It's one of the 10 exterior doors on the property that still need to be fixed. A job that we'll be tackling gradually over the coming years as it makes sense in between other projects. We're using the open frame of the door that was there as the base and are adding recycled concrete shuttering boards to close it up and a glass pane to let some light in. We found a glass pane in one of the outbuildings. It used to belong to a 1950s kitchen cupboard, which is no longer there. We thought the etched windmill was a nice wink to our life in the Netherlands before moving to Italy.
A few weeks ago we painted the back door of the stable and we like the color but we do think it was a little bit too pale um, and a little bit too yellow. So I've been doing some experiments with new pigment mixes and we've settled on a new color that's slightly darker, slightly less yellow and that we think works better with the color of our stone walls. Behind me, uh, well, that was the color of the first door, and this, this is what we settled on for um, for the new uh, paint color. So that's what I'm gonna mix today. We're making flower paint, which is a very simple type of DIY paint made of flower pigments, linseed oil, and iron sulfate. It's not only simple, it's also very durable, easy in maintenance and uh, very environmentally friendly. And we talk a little bit more about flower paint in one of the previous episodes where we are painting the stable back door. I can't remember which one exactly it was, but I think it's four or five episodes ago. One of the difficult things with flower paint is that the iron sulfate um, causes the paint to dry up a little bit more brown than the color that you have in your pan. And you only see that after a few days. So you have to mix your paint a little bit on the cooler side of the end result that you want.
I don't think we're going to use this for much. I don't know. Probably not. It looks like for tractor stuff or something. Yeah, big machines. Yeah. You could hang it above the door as a sign. Ooh, as a sign. <laughs> Workshop <laughs> here. Sure. Maybe one day when we do have a tractor. Then we can take it off again. And by then it will be trophy waste. <laughs>
This is the middle room in a row of three of the outbuilding that we call the Polayo, the hen house. We started clearing it out almost a year ago, thinking that this was the first part of the property where we're going to renovate into a holiday accommodation. We've changed our plans since then, and because of budget and permit reasons, are going to renovate the ground floor of the main house first. But one day, this will be a delightful cottage. Before that time, this is going to be our garden shed. It's such a lovely space and it would be a shame to let it sit empty for long. We also need to move the garden tools out of the garage they currently live in because we need that to be empty to do some repair work on the ceiling and roof above.
This garden shed, while nowhere near finished, already looks 10 times more delightful than any garden shed I've ever had before. It's a bit silly, but we only now notice that there's a big gap over the door. Uh, it's because the door was hanging upside down and we never measured it the correct way. Maybe one day we'll fix it, but for now it's a cute door. <laughs> <laughs> 